Brand new designs are up on the Edge Redbubble, werewolves, spiders, FedEx amphibians, protocrocs, and more. Go check out the Redbubble with links in the description and comment section below. Tardigrades are micro-animals found worldwide. They are some of the most resilient organisms on the planet, as they are able to survive in mud volcanoes against the pressures of the deep sea, the freezing temps of the Antarctic, without oxygen, under high levels of usually fatal radiation, lack of water, lack of food, and in the vacuum of space. They are related to most other creepy crawlies who shed their exoskeletons in order to grow. The insects, myriapods, crustaceans, arachnids, onychophorans, and nematodes, but comprise their own phylum of over 1,300 known species, ranging from 0.1 millimeters to 1.5 millimeters in length. Each year, plenty of discoveries are made about these cute little bags of water, so here are 10 of the most important and coolest ones of the last year. These feats are made for walking. The tardigrades' claim to fame is their intense resilience to virtually all forms of violent bombardment. Despite that, the first observations of the little microbeasts during the 18th century centered around their movement. They slowly lumber around like big fat bags of jello. It's what earned them their nickname of Water Bear. A paper by Jasmine Narodi, Lisette Duran, Deborah Johnston, and Daniel Cohen, published March of 2021, looked to further expand upon the understanding of the mechanisms behind the locomotion of the tardigrade. How do these little creatures move? The team observed some tardigrades under the microscope and marked down how they moved each of their six main legs and how fast they did it. The results showed that, when compared to other hexapodal organisms, like insects, the tardigrades moved in much the same way. This is despite being a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a size of most insects. The researchers proposed the reason may be that tardigrades, arachnids, and insects had a common ancestor that evolved this way of moving that was passed down to all living lineages without being altered. In other words, it was just that efficient. Another option is that tardigrades evolved this insect-like way of walking convergently due to living in a similarly variable environment. Amber Bears Tardigrades are great, but like, where are all their fossils? Based on genetics, between them and all other arthropods, scientists have been able to figure a molecular clock as to when the tardigrades and the rest of the panarthropods diverged from one another on the big, bad invertebrate family tree at some point before the Cambrian period. Tardigrades don't fossilize very easily. They're small and don't have any hard parts that could become fossilized. They can only be frozen through amber or captured as a phosphatized stain. As such, there are only about three known fossil tardigrades despite their 500 million years plus reign. Bjorn Legai is a fossil tardigrade preserved in 78 million year old amber from Manitoba. Another individual tardigrade was preserved in the same chunk of amber but was too shriveled to identify. Nearly 40 years after this specimen came another, named Milnesium swollenskii, from 90 million year old New Jersey amber, making it about 14 million years older than the other tardigrade. The next was a set of four phosphatized specimens from mid Cambrian period rocks of Siberia. These tardigrades are very old and very different from any living tardigrades. Finally, 2021 marked the description of a brand new specimen of Miocene amber from the Dominican Republic containing a single individual that has been given the name Paradoriforibius chronocaribius. Thanks guys, thanks for making it easy for laypeople to read and pronounce. The fossil itself is rather poorly preserved as you can barely tell what's going on. But close observation under different light wavelengths makes it clear that the thing is definitely a tardigrade. It's not particularly strange or unusual, but adds just one more specimen to the very small collection of fossil tardigrades. This is also the first from the Cenozoic era, meaning there's now at least one tardigrade known from each of the eras of life, and it helps to better understand the evolution of modern tardigrades. 
quantum physics and tardigrades. I'm neither a quantum physicist, nor do I have anything more than a passing interest in the topic, but once it involves kooky little critters like tardigrades, you have my attention. In late 2021, a study was uploaded to the preprint repository, RZIV, that posited they had quantum entangled a living thing, a tardigrade to be exact. The paper has yet to be peer-reviewed as of writing this video, and is still in preprint, so it needs to be properly vetted. That didn't stop news outlets and social media accounts from ringing in the news of the first quantum entangled animal. When tardigrades encounter extreme conditions, they hibernate by shriveling up into a cocoon. This state is called the tun state, and when in this state, all of their body processes are shut down. This is why they were chosen for this quantum experiment, as quantum computers need extremely low temperatures to work. Quantum entanglement is a weird quirk of existing on the quantum level. It occurs when two things become linked in a way that makes the two things inseparable. They cannot be described separately and exist as one thing. These things are usually particles like electrons. Don't get me wrong, I don't understand it or the math used to prove it, but that's as simple an explanation as I could find. Now we move on to the qubit. A qubit is a quantum system with two possible states, like ones and zeros in computer code. If you smoosh two qubits together, you now have a two-qubit system with both qubits possibly existing in two different states simultaneously. The thing is, you cannot tell what state either of those qubits will be without measuring them. In the new study, the researchers say they entangled a qubit with a tardigrade, meaning they now exist together as one. Some other quantum physicists have noted that the reasoning behind the research may not be enough to define the qubit and tardigrade as entangled. The researchers placed the tardigrade over top the qubit and then measured the reaction. The frequency of the qubit changed slightly once the tardigrade was introduced, and that was taken as entanglement, but not of the highest order. The paper is essentially making claims that are stronger than the data found by the study can support. Therapeutics in water bear DNA? There's a special kind of juice that exists naturally in the mitochondria of some invertebrate animals. That juice is mitochondrial alternative oxidase. The stuff, when inserted into our mitochondria, is a potential therapeutic. Any research into finding a way to produce it in other animals is medically important. A team of scientists found the AOX stuff in tardigrades in 2021. Parallel Evolution in Tardigrade Juice There's a special type of sugar called trehalose. It's found in a bunch of invertebrates, and it helps them to go into a state called anhydrobiosis. This state is activated when the critter is dehydrated and trying to get through some really dry times. Animals with a backbone tend not to have this substance, so any research into it is good news for us backbone enjoyers. A new study in mid-2021 found that tardigrades can create this substance and got the gene for it via horizontal gene transfer. Vertical gene transfer is passing DNA from parent to offspring, so horizontal gene transfer is passing DNA in any other way, which is hard to wrap your brain around when it comes to multicellular animals that cannot interbreed and can't literally take in DNA from the environment. Water Bears versus Climate Change A group of scientists wanted to test the toughest living thing on the planet against the onslaught of climate change. To do so, they simulated the effects of climate change inside a series of interconnected tubes filled with soil and a ton of tardigrades. They increased the temperature up to 5.5 degrees Celsius above ambient and… nothing. A surprise to no one that tardigrades weren't affected even a little bit. Come on. You'll have to try harder than that. Throwing Tardigrades at a Wall Alejandra Taspas and Mark Burchell, two scientists at the Center for Astrophysics and Planetary Science at the University of Kent, experimented to see if tardigrades could survive extreme impacts. The greater purpose of these experiments was to test how or if tiny organisms could survive hitching a ride on an asteroid from planet to planet. This is a possible explanation for the origin of life on Earth, panspermia. Perhaps life on Earth, or at least some life, arrived here on an asteroid. 
To do this, they shoved a couple tardigrades into a water-filled shaft, froze them so they were in their protective ton state, then shot them at sand targets with a two-stage light gas gun at various speeds from 0.556 km per second to 1 km a second. Turns out the tardigrades survived the impact up to speeds of 0.9 km per second, but nothing beyond that. Typical speeds of space debris they could hitch a ride on are in the many kilometers per second range. Big oof on that idea. Caring for water bears Ever wondered how to culture and care for tardigrades? Unless you work for a biology department, you probably haven't. A new study basically laid out the perfect set of instructions to care for a bunch of species of tardigrades, ranging from herbivorous to omnivorous to carnivorous. They found that using scratched petri dishes were the best for housing the little buggers, as they could hold algae as a substrate for them to walk on, and food for their herbivorous species better than non-scratched petri dishes. They put them in spring water, or a mixture of spring water and sterile water. Temperatures at which the culture should be kept depended on the species. Mini beasts were used to feed the carnivorous and omnivorous varieties, like rotifers and nematodes survival of the thickest. Figuring out how and why the tardigrades go into their ton state is important for the understanding of early life and life out there in the universe, as tardigrades diverged from other animals extremely early and more or less kept their morphology rather similar over that time. They are capable of surviving almost any environmental stressor. How they do so at every stage is important to understand. Turns out that when they become a cyst in their ton state, they create new layers of body stuff around them as they shrink. When exposed to radiation, they become a cyst within their own skin. When frozen, they simply become a cocoon that is partly restricted. When they dehydrate, they become a super-rounded cocoon. When they are without oxygen, they don't shrivel up as much and instead just stop moving and become slightly skinnier. Sexy time for tardigrades you might be surprised to find out that these teeny tiny bizarre little mini-beasts also have rather bizarre reproduction strategies. People have been spying on the sex habits of water bears since 1895, when the first observations and descriptions of their sexy times were recorded. From then till 2000, their habits were written about, drawn, and photographed. The first video recording of their antics was captured in 2016. Tardigrades are gross and weird. They lay their eggs in exuvia, exuvia being their shed skin suit. It makes sense though, as no one wants to come and eat your skin, and your skin filled with your eggs might just look like an intimidating foe. A new study published late 2021 provides the first evidence of tardigrades freely laying eggs out in the open and leaving them there, rather than in their skin. The paper also reviews all knowledge on tardigrade reproduction, including their various sex positions, which must have been fun to draw. So that's been the top 10 tardigrade discoveries of 2021. Wonder what else will be found out about these amazing little beasts in 2022. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks goes to my elephant tier patrons, Thea Svensson, Staniforth Hopkins, Dinosaur, Chris Frampton, Biotaverse, Arda Bayer, and Christoph Hubbinger, as well as my Tyrannosaur patrons, Iron Bladesman, Henry Brennan, Danny Van Heck, and Dana Manchester.